I'm starting a new series today on overcoming Lent helplessness. Overcoming Lent helplessness. And this series is, um, I mean, we're going to get into it today. So let, let's just be ahead of each other. So it's a series, it's different from the series we're doing in the second, third, and first service. Glory to God. All right, let's get into the word of God. Will you turn your Bibles, please, to John chapter 5? When it comes to Lent helplessness, this is where I love to. In John chapter 5, you don't have to explain too much. It's right there in front of you. John chapter 5 in verse 2. The Bible says in John chapter 5 in verse 2, there is at Jerusalem by the ship, by the ship market to Paul, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folks of blind, hurt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel will come at a certain season to the pool and trouble the water. And whosoever then, after the trouble of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years, Jesus saw him lie down there, and knew he had been there for such a long time. In that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man, describing what it was, the impotent man answered and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another step, before, step down before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 9, And immediately the man, that was, made, the man was made whole, he took up his bed and walked, and on the same day was the Sabbath. What is Lent helplessness, which is what we want to deal with today? I will give you a good story to help you. Number one, um, the first thing is this. I was reading about how um, um, elephants are tamed, how elephants are tamed. Some of you watch circus and you see how they use this big elephant. And um, it's not a perfect story, but you know, I believe there's some truth in it. So one of the things they do is that when the elephant is very young, they tie its right leg, they tie it to a pole. And the pole is actually bigger than the elephant. So what happens to the elephant is that it will try to come out, come out, come out, then he would not. Eventually, this is what happens. Eventually, the elephant becomes stronger than the pole. But something has happened to the elephant. The elephant has stopped trying. So much so that now, if the elephant just pulls his leg, it will uproot the pole and everything. But because he had tried for a long time and he couldn't do it, the rope has moved from his leg into his brain. It has now become a mindset that says, there's no need to try again. I cannot do it. That situation is what we call Lent helplessness. What is Lent helplessness? It's the perception of having no control or of having no control, you know, over our circumstances. I will give you another example. You know, there's a lady, there's someone that I know that, um, there's someone that I know that got into the business and in business, he had certain setbacks. The first business he did, he lost a lot of money. The second business he did, he lost a lot of money. The third business, he didn't lose as much as he lost. Ultimately, he just came up and said, I said, what are you doing right now? He said, Pastor, I will tell you the truth. I'm just tired of life. If God wants to bless me, let him bless me. I'm tired of doing business. And I said, so what are you going to do to come out of this right now? He said, I'm doing nothing. And where that person has found himself is in Lent helplessness. The reason I'm saying so to you is this. It's a new year. And some people had dreams. And some people, they had dreams but because of the experiences of the past, they have just totally given up. And when I say given up, giving up means they are not doing something. It means that they are doing something, but they don't really expect a significant change in it. I'll give you another story. There was this girl I met, I think by the time I met her, she was in the, in the mid-30s. And um, someone had told her at some point in her life that, that spiritually something had happened to her and she will not get married. And they told her that thing when she was about 17. This was what they were told her. 
and she noticed that something will happen, someone will date her, leave her, someone will date her, leave her, someone will date her, leave her. So eventually, I got to know her, and um, I said, and when she told me, I said, are you praying about this? I said, Pastor, I'm praying. But whatever God will do, let God do for me. And when she said that, I just perceived that she has come into that state where she was no longer trying or believing for a miracle. Even though she was praying, the active faith, you know, you can be praying, but that active faith that God would do it was not there again. So I asked her, I stood back, I said, I asked her, I said, okay, let me ask some few questions. Um, number one, do you still try to meet guys? And he says, Pastor, sincerely, I don't. He said, as soon as a guy come, I just walk the person off. And I said, why do you do that? He said, now that you are saying it, because subconsciously, I've been told that I will not get married. I said, but you are praying. He said, even though I'm praying, I don't really think that happen. And I said, okay, secondly, when you go to public places, do you dress up like a young girl that wants to meet people? He said, I used to do that before. He said, I don't do that again. And I said to her, you know, in, in the way we are saying right now, you have entered into a place called learned helplessness. Let helplessness can happen to people in any phase of their life. Look at this man at John chapter 5. Do you know what? Jesus Christ asked the man, do you want to be made whole? What's the answer to the question, do you want to be made whole? Is it not yes or no? Let's look at the verse again. John chapter 5. The Bible says this, And when Jesus saw he had lied there, and for a long time, and he said unto him in verse 6, Will thou be made whole? If Jesus Christ says to someone, Will thou be made whole? The simple answer is yes. What did the man say? The man said in verse 7, The impotent man says, Sir, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, did you see something? Instead of him to express the desire of what he wanted, he had began to give excuse. So when you are in left helplessness, this is one of the things you notice. You begin to talk as if every everything that controls your success is outside your control. This is how you know that you are there. This is it's what you so how far with money? Ah, what can I do? There's nothing I can do. The, everything is finished. You begin to talk as if everything is totally out of your control. It's a very painful place to be. And the reason, and the second way you know that in that state is this. People that have that state have a history of, what do they call it, uncontrollable failures. There were things that happened to them that broke them. There were things that happened that shattered them. Up to the point that they came to a point that feel as if there's nothing I can do again. So, these are the patterns. So, Jesus Christ asked this man, do you want to be made whole? The man could have said, yes, I want to make whole, but I need a man. What the man began to do was to look for excuses. He, the man began to blame other people for the condition of where he was. Sometimes you will see a lady that is single and say, ah, when I get married, I say, will I marry myself? You know, saying something like, if I, if I could control, do you think I'll be married? That this is totally outside of my control. You ask someone that, how far with your business? Say, ah, if, don't you know what is going on right now? This is out of my control. The challenge, and watch this now, the challenge with learned helplessness is this. Number one, it will stop you from trying. And if you want to be sincere, there are people under the sound of my voice here. People think you are trying, but really you know on the inside you have stopped trying. Can I have a weakness? And when people say Happy New Year, Happy New Year to you is a cliche. Because the truth is that you've just resorted to faith, F-A-T-E, that God if you want to do it, do it. If you are not doing it, don't do it. All I know is I cannot kill myself. I posted a video recently and I was talking about, I was just, it was a video on teaching about challenging people's faith. And someone wrote in the comment section, he said, Pastor, I've heard what you said. I've tried all these things before. The place I am in my faith with God is this. God, if you want to do it, do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. I cannot come and kill myself or bother myself. And the person does not know this, eh? That whatever you live that way is never done. Because the vital things to get things done in the realm of the spirit is your faith. But that kind of person, if you listen to their story very well, they will tell you that there was a time I tried. There was a time I tried. 
There was a time I tried and it failed. Look at this man in John chapter 5 verse 7. The impotent man answered him and said, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the water. Then he says something. For while I'm coming down, that was being a story over and over and over and over again. I'm trying to help you understand the reason for lent helplessness. One of the reasons is that over time you have tried and tried and tried and tried and it has not worked out. You have tried and tried and tried to raise the money. You didn't see the money being raised. You have tried and tried to make the business work. The business not make profit. You have tried and tried to date successfully. You never got married. You have tried and tried to love someone. You eventually got hurt. You have tried and tried to lose weight and it just didn't work out. Length helplessness. The problem with length helplessness is this. If you don't deal with it, what will happen to you is that eventually you will stop trying. And what, oh wow, this is powerful. And when you stop trying, what should become a face, become a permanent state? I'm telling you. When people stop trying, what should become a face becomes a permanent state. So you have tried to lose weight over and over and over again and you didn't lose weight. You now give up. Then eventually, that weight pro problem you have becomes your permanent state. Did you see this man? The Bible says he was there for 30 and 8 years. Why? Because he had given up trying, he, that phase now became a permanent state. Did you notice in this situation, it was not even the man that reached out just for healing. This is one of the few exceptions in the scriptures where Jesus Christ could go and meet someone personally and ask to be healed. It was the mercy of God knowing that the man had been there for such a long time. And I'm saying so to you because in church today, there are people that there's a dream in your heart. As a matter of fact, you will come to church, you will come to church and pray about it. But deep down within your heart, you have become helpless. And one of the things that God will do to you today is this. He will ask you, will thou be made whole? What does that question mean? The question is simple. Do you believe you can still have a miracle? And the reason why God, the reason why, is the reason why Jesus asked that question is this. He's just trying to open your mind. Do you believe you can still find love? Do you believe that the loan can be paid? Do you believe that your life can still amount to something significant? Do you believe that your relationship can work out? Do you believe that everything can turn again around for your good? Do you believe it? The reason I'm saying so is that it's possible to struggle and pray and confess. All of us on the other side, ah, this lady is working out. This guy is working out. But deep down on the inside, there's a helplessness. You totally feel as if this is not going to work out. So why am I putting my effort into this? Glory to God. I said glory to God. When people are in the state of length helplessness, one of the things you notice is this. They begin to lack motivation and they don't take initiative. You know why they don't take initiative? Initiative. Once you're in the state of length helplessness, you cannot see a way out. This man said, there's no man. Couldn't he has begged somebody and said, excuse me, sir, you that you're asking me, I want to be healed. If you can just stay with me for the next 10 days, I will be healed. You can be the man. What length helplessness does is this, it blinds you to the resources that are within you, around you. Look at Hegai, the mother of Ishmael. The Bible says she was praying that the child would die. An angel opened her eyes and all of a sudden she saw a well beside her. The angel did not put the well there. The well had always been there. But lent helplessness blinded her. She could not see that there was someone within her space that caught her. Let me tell you something there. Eh? Sometimes when a door is shut in your business, it's because another door is meant to open. But when you are in late uplessness, you keep focusing on that door. You cannot take initiative. You cannot take initiative. You cannot take initiative. It's like the woman with the it's like the woman with the pot of oil. I want to ask you a question. When they got into financial trouble, why didn't they come to Elijah? Uh, can, can we go deeper? 
Vision and change happens from two dimensions. Sorry, change happens from two dimensions. Change happens because of desperation or change happens because of vision. But for most of us people, and I will say this, most of the black race that succeed, our success comes from desperation. You know the bad part of that? The bad part is that when you're desperate and you succeed, your success will not go far. Because as soon as you get comfortable, you will settle. That's why the average African, once they buy one or two houses, three or four cars, can travel abroad, settles. The reason why is that the vision was not, the, the change was not visionary. The change was a function of desperation. So for the average African, we easily come out of poverty, but we don't never step into high level wealth. So we can easily come out of poverty. So you just move. Once you move from Alimosho, you move to Bagada. Move to Bagada, you move to Leki, you struggle to Ikoyi, and that's it. But where you are is not real wealth, but it's manageable. Because at least nothing is chasing me again. The woman that had the jar of oil, the reason why she came to Elijah was not because she had faith. The reason why she came to Elijah was desperation. That like there's no way again. And that's why most of you, you will notice that your leap of faith started when you were desperate. Am I talking this in? But for most, for, for, for the white culture, where poverty is not prevalent, most of them, their change comes because of vision. And that's why you see them making so much billions of dollars and they're still working so hard. Because it's not desperation, there's a bigger purpose ahead. There's a meeting we normally have in January called International Passengers Conference. It's not open to the whole church, it's just for the leaders. And in the session today, we appreciated the um, people that were gospel sponsors. And one of the guys in church, I know him very well, he's a lawyer. He said, ah, pastor, when you appreciated the people that sponsored the gospel and what they had done for the gospel, he said, my heart broke. I said, why? He said, pastor, mark it right now. No matter what happens next year, I'll be on that stage. I said, what do you mean? He said, up to you now, I've not seen the reason to make more money. He said, the money I've made up to now can take care of me and my family. He said, we live in Ikoyi, everything is okay. He said, but now I've found a reason. The reason why you have not gone further, you have not found a reason. The day they tell you that your house is burning, you'll be surprised how far you can run. You can run, but you have not found a reason to run. You can do better. You have not just found a reason to do better. So, every time, and let me tell you something, most people don't live at the level of their potential. They live, most people don't live at the level of their potential. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I, I was talking to Sister Banky over there and we're just chatting. When you see people that lose radical weight, that's what she does for a living. She just will lose weight. When you see people that lose radical weight consistently, most of the time, there was a health issue. You know why? Until you find a purpose bigger than yourself, you will not change. And that's what I'm saying to you. If you are going to come out of a state of helplessness, you must, it must, it's almost as if two things. It's either desperation pushes you or visions pushes you. Desperation will help you go forward in the short term, but vision will take you further in the long term. Someone said to me, say, Pastor Balaji, have I have used TBS? Where next? And I said, that's the problem. Because desperation is thinking of small, small things. Vision has a bigger picture. It's a bigger picture. I've told you before that the biggest guardian award, if I'm alive, is the guardian unto Jesus Christ. It's a personal mission. It's not be gathering to a concert or to dance. It's to be gathering to the name of the Lord Jesus all over the world. So why is it important to overcome length helplessness? And this is the first part of the teaching. Number one, when you are in the place of length helplessness, you'll be blinded to the resources that you have within you 
are around you that can make a breakthrough or a change. And the reason why you'll be binded because length, helplessness will put you in a state where you cannot see the resources that you have. As a matter of fact, when you're in a state of length, helplessness, you will be sabotaging yourself. You will do things that will increase your helplessness. Like the lady I spoke about. You know, she had, you know, she said she wants to marry. That's what she said with her mouth. But I now began to ask her, do you go back, go out and meet people? No. I said, is your Instagram page open? She said, it's closed. I said, um, and you're praying for a husband. I said, well, you don't go out and meet people. Instagram page is closed. I said, when guys say hello to you, you say, I give them fake numbers. You know, I, I said, okay. So, unconsciously, it was when I sat down with her that she realized that she had now become the person that was sabotaging the process. That a lot of things she called was demonic was what she was doing with her hand. When you are in length helplessness, you are, I know you have lost money in business, but there are certain things you can do to recover. You will not even take the steps to bring about the recovery because you'll be telling yourself it will not work. It will not work. It will not work. And you will never know what will work except you try it. Praise God. There are some people here that have addiction. Um, uh, what do you call it? Pornographic addiction. We should not talk about that one. Pornography. Masturbation. And you have become helpless. You just feel as if ah, there's nothing I can do. And the truth is this. The reason why you feel that way is that you have tried to break it one time, two times, three times, four times, and you've not been to break it. But listen to me. If you've tried to break a habit few times a habit of pornography a habit of masturbation a habit just some kind of nicotine addiction cocaine addiction and you've tried a couple of times you've not broken it listen to me what you should tell yourself is this i still do not know what it takes to break it not that i cannot break it are you getting me what i need is more knowledge and wisdom what i don't need is to give up what people conclude is that because I've tried it for two years and it didn't work, then it's not going to work. Don't make your problem personal. An addiction is not a personal thing. You went through a phase and you went through an addiction. Don't make it like, I'm an addict. Don't call yourself what you're not. God, Bible says it clearly. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. The only reason why I'm practicing the addiction is that I don't know what to do to break the addiction. The moment you know what to do, you break it. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Glory to God. When people have, when people are in the state of um, land helplessness, you see them with consistent negative emotion. They don't even trust themselves. So how do you come out, out of it? The first thing you come out, I mean, I've said something to come out of it. And you may need to go back and watch this message. You may need to go back and share with people. The first way to come out of it, in addition to the ones I've said, is this. The first way to come out... I don't want to say the first way because I've mentioned it the other way. Another way to come out of length helplessness is to question the assumptions that you have. When you say, I cannot, ask yourself, why can't you? Oh, I cannot stop being an addict. Ask yourself, why can't you? I can't do the business again. Ask you, why can't you? The reason why is that once you begin to challenge that way of thinking, you'll find a breakthrough. But the key thing is that can you challenge that way of thinking? I can't find true love. You'll ask yourself, why can't you? Mrs. Kumuyi got married at almost 70. How old are you? I got a wine press testimony. I almost broke down in tears. A lady said last year wine press she did a video i will return to 2024 wine press as engaged i'm 43 years old today by the time i'm returning next year i'll be engaged the first year of wine press she sent her testimony she said see what the lord has done the person she's engaged to is an md of an oil company never married before himself Once you say you can't, you are correct. You can't. Because what you say to yourself is what you believe. So 
So I understand that two years ago you guys made a loss, three years ago you made a loss, and the way the year started, dollars tumbled. But the question is this when others say there's a casting down, you will say there's a lifting up. But the problem is that you already feel helpless without starting. Let helplessness make you fail without starting the exam. So how do you deal with it? You go back and ask yourself fundamental questions and say, why do I think this way? Challenge what you're thinking. When we're going to have the meeting at uh, TBS, someone said, why are you inviting and this is, this is how you break the thinking, though. He said, why are you inviting? I said, I'm, I'm the one preaching. I said, ah, just you. He said, when people go to TVS, they gather everybody because it's a massive crowd. He said, who are those singing that they were expecting? He said, that, ah, if these people don't sing, you can't gather a crowd. Ah, I said, that's the problem. The problem is that I have exposure that tells me this is not true. I saw Pastor Chris Oyakilume Field Stadium and Pastor Chris. He didn't bring anybody else, Pastor Chris. I spoke to Pastor Chris and Pastor Chris said, believe in your anointing. I said, that's it. The reason, well, let me tell you, lent helplessness draws strength from example of helplessness. That's why this man, did you know he didn't go home? He was staying with other sick people because it provides that kind of emotional support that keeps him useless. When you are, when you are helpless, Misery likes company. You will not look for people that like yourself, that believe what you believe, that talk what you talk, that will not accept responsibility but blame other people. The first thing you have to do is to challenge the thinking and said, this thing I'm thinking is it true? And how you challenge it that you look for other references in your life and be like, one, two, three, four, five. It wasn't like that for them. They had a testimony. I can have a testimony. Praise God. I said, Praise God. I want to get three people that are dealing with lent helplessness that either will overcome, they are there, and we'll talk about it and close the service. Have you learned something already today? <laughs> lent helplessness. This, this month, and I'm saying it because you know what I'm saying, God, the year. The year is still young. If you can fix it now, you can have a better year. But the point is that I don't want to because the, the, let me tell you the thing about lenders is that for all of you that are smart, you will even be as if you are moving, but you are moving on a rocking chair. You know what the rocking chair is? Rocking chair is the chair that goes forward, backward, forward, backward. There's motion, no progress. When people are in lent helplessness, they will just be in activity, there will be no real results. The activity will just give them to say, at least let them not say I'm not doing something. I, I mean, I mean, I, mean <laughs> I, I was at the bus stop one time, and, and let me judge what, what this means. One guy that was, I think it was Eden Challenge, came and he was selling handkerchief. And when he sold the handkerchief, I did not buy. And the guy said, You people say that you are not buying, you know. I said, I'm not buying. He said, You people are the one that told us that we should go and look for something to do as business. He said, I've now sold handkerchief. You have refused to buy. So you know what that means? I'm not doing this to make money. I'm doing this to let you know that I found something. I'm still begging. Only I'm begging in buying. Late upless makes you do... When you're in late uplessness, for some people, they will do nothing. Some people, they will do just enough for you to say they are not failures or they are lazy. But everything amounts to nothing eventually. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's take some conversations. If you want to have how you have dealt with lent helplessness, what you're going through with lent helplessness, raise up your hands, please. Where? Over here. Thank you. There's someone on my left hand side, on my right hand side. Rashid, will you take a microphone? Take another microphone. Okay, okay. Samura is taking the microphone. Thank you. And you are going to pray. Let me tell you something. You are going to pray that God will send revelation that will sh break the mindset. You will even pray that God will expose it to you because there are some times you don't know that you are dealing with it. As I'm speaking to you right now, some of you, it's obvious to you that mm, 
something's happening here. Yeah, go ahead, please. No, don't worry. She can speak on her seat. Yeah. You can. You might just need. Yeah. Just keep speaking. They're gonna fix it. So, I didn't actually realize it was lent uplessness until you explained it today. Um, I felt like it was me leaving it to the will of God, which is weird because. Um, you felt that what? It was me leaving it to the will of God. Okay. My mom complained about it the day before yesterday. She was like, you stop posting your business as usual. You stop doing anything about business. And I'm like, don't worry. I don't want to post it anymore. And it came from a place of throughout last year, I kept getting a lot of jobs, but I didn't understand it. Every time I took a job, it failed. It wasn't like I wasn't getting jobs. I was getting jobs back to back, but it was one mistake or another. And somehow this year, I... I'm going to be very honest. I stopped praying with NLP. I used to do NLP prayers. I stopped slowly. And then suddenly, when you asked, um, we should write a letter of congratulations, I didn't write it. I looked at the old one and I said, I don't think it has been answered. Um, when we got to church, uh, Wine Press, I served. But then I realized that I already written my goal for 2024. I didn't even know. And I was like, okay, let me just tear this out and drop it on the altar. Because I, I, didn't, I didn't know what I wanted. Then later, I decided, okay, let me just write. I want to be more spiritually inclined because I know that's something I'm getting weak at. Um, as per business, I've tried to make moves, but I'm not really enthusiastic about it. So let I, me ask you a question. Has things gotten better now that you feel helpless about it? It is in a place where I don't think about it. So I exactly. do other things to hide it. So I, I'm just showing you. So what's your question now? My question is... Um, I'm confused because at some point I thought it was a good thing not to think about it and just say, oh, God will sort it out if he wants to sort it out. But now I'm thinking, am I supposed to do something actively to tell God to sort it out? Okay, good. So the first thing is this, eh? Any faith, F-A-I-T-H, that claims that total responsibility for success is on God is fake. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I said? Any faith that claims total responsibility of anything is on God is fake. My sister, if God is going to sort it out, he's going to sort it out through you. So let me tell you what you should do. The first thing is that you should ask yourself, these things that are failing, number one, what am I learning? That's the first question. What am I learning? The reason why is that sometimes the most powerful lessons you will learn in life are for your failures. And sometimes failure is just a stepping stone to success. Because when you fail at something, you are learning how it does not work. Then number two, ask yourself that, what do I need to know to make it work? So, I don't know what to do, but there's practical things to know that it doesn't work. You know, one of our leaders sells property and it didn't sell for some time and he came to see me and I said, okay, before I, after we pray, I said, there's this guy that is also a leader in church that also does well in the sales. Can you go and see him and ask him, what does he know that you don't know? Why? There's no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is ignorance. So, your mountain poses as ignorance. What don't you know? There's what you do not know. And listen to me, there's no amount of prayer that can move knowledge to you. You must go after knowledge by yourself. Oh, we're going to do the meeting in TBS. It's our first meeting in TBS. I had to go and see someone that done meeting, not someone, people that done meeting in TBS. Because when you we don't do meeting in TBS, it occurs to you that that place is full of area boys. Is it not true? Why are cars not bought good during experience? So you go and find out. And experience will tell you that we'll get police, we'll get soldiers, we'll get this and this. But the most important to get is that you use the thief, you use the area boys to watch the cars. He said, you use the area boys to watch the cars. So, they are the ones that will arrest each other. There are some dynamics that you can never know until they explain to you. Meanwhile, I could have been praying, Magaboko Boshakaba, or angels, Kabalibo Koboloma Nebrade, Eboshakapa, Le Momomomo. An angel will say, when you finish praying, go and ask. Praise God. What's the second question? It, it, does that suffice for you?
So if I were you, I would look for someone that's done well in that space that I'm in. I will sit down with them, not just once for the next, I will sit down with them at least seven times and bring up questions. You know, and I'm going to go back and put more effort. What about if the reason why you've not grown is because there's no capacity? You know, all right, praise the Lord. Another one, a question, a comment. Yes, go ahead, please. Go ahead and take the mic. There's someone on this side. I can't see the person, but I, I see there's someone. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor, thank you, sir, for this opportunity. Yeah, Pastor, my question goes like this. Um, um, I'm a kind of, uh, kind of shy person that each time I pray, I do hear instruction from God to go and preach the gospel in the street. So, mm -hmm. um, this shy time that I'm not so... So, what's the question? So, the question is that I, uh, my my uh, brother, praise the Lord, you know, told me about um, himself preaching to someone and... He what's the question? Okay. Okay, sit down first, pick up the question, then the mic will come back to you. Okay. Yeah. You may be nervous, you may have to... Another person? Just raise your right hand above your head. There's something... Maybe there's an area you're struggling with, helplessness. Maybe there's an area you need to come out of it, there's, or you have come out of it, you know, that kind of thing. Please, the questions will relate to the teaching. The questions cannot be outside the teaching. This is not a question and answer debate, you know. Yeah. Have you seen someone? There's, there's a guy here. Yeah, thank you. Just go ahead. Good afternoon, church. Um, good afternoon, pastor. Um, so, um, when you were speaking just now, I was actually texting my friend and telling him, like, oh, I think this pastor is living with me at home because... This pastor is what? Living with me at home. Yeah, because... Um, um, you know, a few days I was telling my girlfriend that uh, I'm just tired and I've decided to leave everything in God's hands. Anything he decides to do with me, I'm, I'm, I'll follow him. I'm game with him. I just, I just want to leave everything and just do as I, I can. You want to leave everything in his hands? Yes. Like, That's a spiritual way of dealing with your That's what we say. We just, I'll yeah. leave everything in his hands. I just told myself that I'll leave everything for God and I'll I'll just so what's your question? You. Yeah, so my, my question is that um, I am actually um, into this recording business. And yeah, what? I'm actually into this recording business. Recording? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Uh, recording business. And uh, I've always found it difficult to like push myself out and my artist out based on, uh, on funding and the rest. So my question is now that is it that um, me, I, I, should I just go out and just do it the way it is? Or how... how, how okay, I'll, I'll answer you. I get the question. Yes, sir. Two things. You will never know how far you can go except you try. You will never know how far you can go except you try. If I told you we could hold a meeting in TBS, would you have believed me? No. But now you believe me because we've done it. You will never know how far. And let me tell you something. Holding the meeting in TBS, you must remember that Top Land Bridge was closed. And it was not a one-day meeting. In a one-day meeting, everyone got out for one night. It was a three-night meeting. But you will never know that was possible. You will never know what you can until you try. That's the first thing. The second thing, sir, is this. There's someone that's done what you have said successfully. Why can't you sit at the person's feet and learn? Those are my suggestions to you. All right. Can we take the last one? Anybody here? Who? Huh? I, I don't want to pick. She wants... Do you want to say something, the lady in front? Okay. There's someone. Where? There's a... Okay. The, yeah. There's someone. Maybe the two of them, yeah. There's a lady black in wearing black, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Please, I wanted to ask, um, Lent helplessness, when you are doing something, mm -hmm. you are being persistent about it, and 
sometimes you tire out. Yeah. When you tire out and you still get back on your feet again yeah. and still keep pushing, yeah. does that still count as lent helplessness? Well, even every, when you every, everybody can get tired. Everybody, everybody get tired. It's normal. Yeah. Okay. And then when you... So when you tell yourself you're tired and you are... You take a break from it. Let me help you. Most times you think effort equals to result. No. Right effort equals to result. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. He that wedged the edge. Put it on the screen. Ecclesiastes 10.10. 10. Because most of you are like, I'm trying. The fact that you're trying doesn't mean you get results. It's the right effort that produces what? The right result. Let's read one to go. If the iron be blunt and you do not wedge it, then he must put in what? So if you are putting more results and you are not getting results, then you are going to put in more strength. He now says, but wisdom is profitable to do it. Can you give me the passion and um, the living translation, the NLT or message translation? Let's see what that says like. He said, using a dull axe requires strength. So sharpen the blade. The value of wisdom, it helps you succeed. So a lot of you, which is what they're saying, you are putting of wisdom, you need to sharpen the blade. And that's why you better tell people, go and look for someone that's done it before and learn there. That's how you sharpen the blade. The last one, the lady. And we close. The lady, there was a lady, yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I think a lot of you should share this message with your friend because everybody has a friend in this state. Yes or no? And what you can do is that you can tweet. Can you put a hashtag on Twitter? You can tweet and put hashtag PB Speaks on Instagram. You can also say that I will, I will repost once you tell me. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I feel I'm in a state of length helplessness. Okay. I started my business, I think, three years ago, and I was really, really doing well. So in 2022, I had a major breakdown. I lost a lot of capital in the business. And since then, I kept trying, trying. I just feel I'm evolving around a circle and I'm just talked because I, I, I don't know. I, I am very helpful to, uh, helpful to other people like now I'm in a state where I need help and I don't even know I'm shy. I don't even know uh, how to ask for help. Okay, and I'll tell you what you need to do. The reason why you don't know what to do next or how to ask for help is that once you're in a state of less helplessness, your initiative that will bring you out of it becomes blocked. Yeah. Once you step out of it, you'll find the options. I'll give an example. There's someone that I knew that was struggling with debts, really struggling. Then, but it was paying back the repayment. I sat down with him and we spoke. Within the period of six months, he's been out that debt for five years. He finished paying the whole debt. Why did that happen? As soon as we got him out of the state, his eyes opened. And that's what I'm saying. That lent helplessness blocks you from seeing the resources you have. That can translate the future you want. His eyes was blocked. So in your state, I will not ask you to look for anything. The first thing I will say is for you to come out of the state. When you come out of the state, you will see the answer. Yeah. And you know how you need to come out of the state? You need to question what you believe right now. So question, what do, why do you think you're stuck? What, 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 what was holding you back? I don't know. I just feel I'm discouraged. You're discouraged. So why are you discouraged? So what is there's something that's making you cry? What is making you cry? I have people I've trained and they've really gone far. Even I don't know. I feel So you have people you've trained have gone. So you felt you are left behind. Yes. So sometimes it's a shame that um, maybe your people you've trained are doing like 10 million and you are doing like 500,000. Exactly. Exactly. You know, let me tell you the mindset that is. What, what's your name, please? Shimlory. Shimlory. The mindset that is holding you back is this. You are thinking that 
because the people have gone far, they will always be ahead of you. But I want you to remember something, that the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. Thank you. I'll give you a story. When I became a pastor, all my pastor friends lived in their houses and had their cars. I was living with my parents and I had no car. Today, the story is different. Your mind is just telling you that you are so behind that you can't catch up. But look at Job. Job was so behind his friends. But when it was time to catch up, Job had way much more than all of his friends. The thing is this, for you to believe that you can have a breakthrough that can take you ahead. And you must remember, the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. Is that possible? Is that possible? No, I, I, give me, speak to me. Is that possible? Yes. Would that be your experience, or it will not be your experience? Yes. So, so, let me tell you why I'm saying this to you. Because people are so ahead, you know that what's happening to her? So even the steps she has to take, she's not ashamed of it. She's like struggling because she's like, I would like catch up. I would like catch up. But you saying those things hold you back. Like when you're saying, I would like, if they were 500 meters ahead of you and you were 500 meters behind them, how would I like catch up? I would like catch up. They go 600 meters. How would I like catch up? I would like catch up. They go 700 meters. But you are no longer moving. So the more you wait and be like, how will I catch up? How will I catch up? You need to, listen to me, my, 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 my lady. My lady, look, listen to me. Do what you can and let grace take you for do what you can't. Do what you can and let grace take you and help you do what you can't. Praise God. Bring the microphone. Let me, let me ask Rashid a question about losing money. Give me a microphone. Camera, catch up, capture his cross leg. I want to capture his cross leg also. Because he's behaving as if he has no problem. Rashid, how much did you lose in business last year? Uh, $500,000. You almost died, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. At some point, you stopped coming to church, yes or no? Correct. Are you here right now? Yes. There's only one way to recover and go further. My lady, if you think that everything is over, remember David. David, everything was taken and God gave David the word. He said, pursue, overtake, recover all. Are you hearing me? Pursue, overtake. For everyone that's lost money, for everyone that is behind, the word of God to you today is what? Pursue, overtake, recover all. Not recover some, recover what? Oh, say pursue, overtake, recover all. Are you coming to testify this year? Are you coming to testify this year? That's what you... But before you can recover all, you must first what? Pursue. That's the thing. Don't let the enemy hold you back. You must first pursue. You must first pursue. You must first overtake. Then what? Recover all. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Lord, I receive the energy and grace to pursue. Oh Lord, I, I, I'm not going to stand still. I, I'm going to pray like crazy. I'm going to pursue in pieces. I'm not going to hold back. My fear is not going to hold back. I'm going to pursue. I'm going to overtake. I'm going to recover. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Go ahead and pray. 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 Let's believe God. Let's believe God for recovery. Let's believe God for recovery. I, I pursue you. If you are dealing with helplessness, I break it up me. I break help. I break helplessness. I pursue. I pursue. I pursue. I overtake. I recover all. In Jesus' name we pray. 
I pray for you that that will be the prophecy of this year. That you will pursue. You will overtake. And you recover all. Did you receive that word? If you really say, I receive it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Let's have our seats and begin to close the service. Amen. Praise the Lord. That was very insightful. You should go back and watch the video. You should share the video with some other people.